Hi there, welcome to the Schwoven's Nest. My name is Sandra. I grabbed a large coffee can and then I went to my computer and created this printable. It will be available on my website as a free printable. So if you're not a member of my website yet, go down to the description box, click on the link and sign up and you'll be able to download everything I have to offer. I'm using regular photocopy paper for this printable and I'm going to be using Mod Podge to put it on the can. I decided to just grab a big brush because that was going to make quick work of putting the Mod Podge onto the coffee can. Making sure that it's nice and straight, I'm going to start in the center and then push out from side to side and I made sure that the seam of the can was at the back. Then I'm also going to just press down into those grooves of the coffee can because that's going to give this project a little bit more character. I knew that the first page wasn't going to wrap all the way around the can and I have about a third of it empty at the back. So before I added the text to my graphic, I printed off a piece of the wood look paper and I'll have this available for you on my website as well, just in case you do a project like this and you need some extra sheets. I've added some more Mod Podge to the can and I'm going to line up the wood planks and do the same thing with this sheet as I did with the front. Just adding it on and then pressing it down and pushing my fingers into the grooves. Then I'll just trim off the excess. The inspiration piece had some handles on the side so I looked around in my stash and I found a couple of these drawer pulls. Now if I wanted these to be actually useful I would drill a hole in the side of the can that was as large as this little section here that I'm covering with twine and then I would put a screw in on the inside. But I'm going to be using these as purely decorative items so what I decided to do was cover the middle piece there with some twine and then I'm going to just hot glue them to the side of the can. I'll do the same thing for the other side and then this project is totally done. In a couple of minutes you've got a really beautiful piece for Christmas. I'm starting off by painting a piece of wood just with some DIY chalk paint. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but I am going to give it two good coats. I'm going to start by doing a buffalo check paint technique on the bottom portion of the sign. I'm going to mask off the very bottom and then I'm going to use one piece of tape as my spacer. I'm just going to lay that down and then I'll put another piece right on top. I'm only going to be doing two stripes of the buffalo check. So once I get this piece down, I'm going to remove my spacer and that's where I'm going to start painting. When you're doing buffalo check, you always start with the lightest color as your base, which will be my white. And now I'm going in with a light gray. This is Parisian gray by Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint. And I'm just going to use a dry brush technique this time because the inspiration was a very light buffalo check. So I didn't want mine to be too much darker. Once that paint is dry, I'm now going to be adding some vertical strips. I'm going to start by putting the piece on the end and then I'm going to use the next one as my spacer and continue all the way across. So I'll have sort of like a checkerboard effect once I'm done with the tape. The second color is a little bit of a darker gray, a little bit of a different tone as well. I'm going a little bit heavier, but still trying to use a dry brush technique for this. The last step is to take your long piece of tape again, but I made a mistake. So do as I say and not as I do. I was supposed to put this piece of tape at the bottom where the original piece of tape was when I painted the first stripe gray. So I didn't clue into this until I was actually editing the video, but I made it work. So the last color I'm using is some black. And again, I'm dry brushing it again because I don't want it to be too harsh. 
Once you've finished painting, go ahead and remove all of the tape and just let your project dry. Now, because I made a mistake, I thought that the white was a little too stark. So I'm just gonna go over it a little bit with my black paintbrush. There isn't a whole lot of paint on it, as you can see, but I'm just dulling it down a little bit so it's not quite so bright white. I used my Cricut and some of the black and white Buffalo check vinyl that you can get at the Dollar Tree. Now, normally I don't have good luck with this, but after trying a few different types of fonts, I have found that the thicker the font, the easier it is to cut out. Anything kind of finicky or small doesn't work on this vinyl because it's really not thick enough. And make sure you're using your fine tip blade and not a deep cut blade. I'm going to go ahead and peel off my transfer tape and then work on my next word. I cut out the word Christmas just in some black vinyl and I'm sticking that on sort of half on the white and half on the buffalo check, just like the inspiration piece. The last thing I did was just take a really fine point Sharpie and trace around all of the letters on the word farmhouse. I kind of thought they were just disappearing into the ba white background, so this just made them pop a little bit more. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. If you like what you see and you love farmhouse decor, I would love it if you could hit that red subscribe button and stick around a while. I'm using four of these wood rounds, but I'm gonna glue two of them together to make it a little bit thicker. These are five inches across, and I know you can get some similar to this at the Dollar Tree. I got these at Dollarama, but I think the ones at the Dollar Tree are more of a coaster size, but they are thicker wood. So those would work just as well. I'm going to paint both of them black and I'm going to do the sides and the back of it too because since these will be hanging ornaments, you're gonna see them from all sides. I found these pre-made graphics in Cricut Design Space and I'm just going to use a glue stick to glue them down. I printed them off on regular printer paper. I decided to go all out with the beads and I'm using some of these beads that I got at a thrift store a few years ago. I'm just going to use some hot glue and glue them all the way around the outside edge of each of the ornaments. I think they turned out beautiful. I just love this deep red color. Once I had everything all glued on, I took a strand of twine and I doubled it up and made a couple of knots on the one end where it was doubled. And the reason I'm doing this is because I need a little bit something chunkier to glue right onto the top of the ornament, which will become the hanger. I'm going to add a generous amount of hot glue into the space and then push the knot right into the glue, making sure that that little excess loop is facing towards the back. Once the glue is dry, I'm going to add three more beads and then tie those off and use them as a hanger. I'll do the same thing for the second ornament and then they can be hung as large ornaments on the tree. You can put them on a wall, you can hang them from a lamp, wherever you wanna put them to show off some Christmas cheer. I'm using this wood frame that I got in a box from one of my subscribers. Last year around Christmas time, she sent me three huge boxes of Christmas supplies and everyday supplies. So I'm going to be using this. The first thing I'm doing is just staining the back of it so it looks more complete. I'm just using the antique stain, applying it with a brush, and then just rubbing it in with a paper towel. 
The front and sides already had some brown paint on it, but to make it look more rustic, I'm just taking some 80 grit sandpaper and just going to town, getting rid of some of that paint to bring some of the natural wood through. I also wasn't too fond of the brown color that's on this, so I'm going to be taking the antiquing wax again and just going over it so it just matches a little bit better with the back and it looks more like a rustic brown. The inside of the frame was already painted white, but I decided to freshen it up and give it a coat of sheepskin, which is an off-white or an ivory color. You can kind of tell the difference here between the plain white and what the sheepskin color looks like. I just thought that would blend a little bit better with the brown frame. I'm using a Cricut for all of my projects today, but if you don't have a Cricut, there's a bunch of different ways that you can get these words and images onto your projects. You can use tissue paper and just print it out using a laser jet or an inkjet printer. Use some Mod Podge and then transfer it on. You can also just trace out some letters or if you have some stencils, you could go ahead and trace the stencils and then just fill them in with some black paint or a paint marker. Today I've got some super easy Christmas projects for you and this first one is using some of these wood planks. Now mine I got at Dollarama but I do know that they're available also at the Dollar Tree and this red truck free printable. I will have this listed down in my description box. It comes from Pixabay, which is all free images. So if you've never looked at Pixabay before, you've got to go because there's a ton of stuff there that's absolutely free. You don't even have to join. I'm just using my paper trimmer to trim it down a little bit so I can figure out how many of the little wood pieces I'm going to need. With the size of the picture that I want to use, I've decided that three of these wood pieces will be sufficient. I do want to leave a little bit of space in between to make it look like it's on a pallet. I figured out the spacing and now I'm going to use three of these large popsicle sticks and hot glue them on to hold the pallet together. Since this is raw wood, I'm going to be using the DIY chalk paint recipe that I have down in my description box. And I'm just going to be going about an inch or a two inches in from each edge because I'm going to be putting the picture on top so I don't need to paint the whole thing. The idea for this little palette is to make it stand up. So I'm using five of these tumbling tower blocks and I'm going to glue them together. I started using hot glue, but then I didn't like that there was a little bit of a gap in between and sometimes the hot glue just doesn't glue straight. So I decided to switch over to my weld bond glue. I'm just using a paintbrush to apply the glue just to make sure I don't get too much excess on it and then I'll glue all five pieces together. I'll also need another set of five which I'll do too and then within 15 to 20 minutes this glue will set up and I'll be able to move on to the next step. That's why I love weld bond glue. It's a permanent hold but it doesn't take long for it to get set up and let you continue with your craft. What I have to do now with the paper is measure to make sure I cut in the right spot. The easiest way to do this is just use your finger and make a crease where that little plank ends. And that's going to give me a line where I need to cut. I'm going to use Mod Podge to glue the paper onto the wood and uh, just a brush to apply the Mod Podge. So I'm trying a new technique with the paper. I'm just using a little bit of water in a spritz bottle and I'm putting it on the back and then placing it down. This is something that I've seen other YouTubers do and it's supposed to prevent bubbles in the paper. I'll let you know how it turns out. 
One thing I did notice as I was working with this is that I was able to easily lift the paper off and reposition it, which is something that usually you can't do when you're working with Mod Podge. It's usually pretty tricky to get that paper lifted up again. I'll just repeat that process for the next two pieces of paper. I'm going to give the whole front of the piece a coat of Mod Podge, working out any bubbles that might be there with the brush and being really careful not to rip anything. Whenever I'm using these little tower blocks, I like to paint them with a dark color. So for this project, I'm going to do black. The reason I do that is so you can't see the joints. If you just stain them or whitewash them or do something else with them, it does look nice because they are wood and they're raw wood, so you could do them any color. But I don't like the fact that you can see that they're little pieces stuck together. So this makes it look a little bit more high end and professional. Now it's time to give the picture a little bit of distressing. So I've got my dry brush and some black chalk paint and I'm just gonna go around the edges and then up and down and side to side and just distress it however I want it to be. If you notice on the planks, I've got the picture put up a little bit higher to leave more space down at the bottom. I wanted the white frame around the picture to be the same width. So once I glue on those blocks, you'll still see the same amount of white peeking out underneath the picture. Using hot glue, I'm going to glue on the sign to the backside first, and then I'll put the other piece of the tumbling tower blocks on top. My second project is using this old piece of poster board. It was behind an old poster and it was huge so I cut it down and these pieces of an old 2x4 that I cut down to size as well. The first thing I'm going to do is give this piece of MDF a couple of coats of white chalk paint. One thing I like to do when I'm using chalk paint on pieces of board like this that aren't really wood is to go in one direction for the first coat and then go in the opposite direction on the second coat. And this is just called a cross hatching method and it just really makes sure that you've got all the areas covered and it's nice and even all the way through. For this sign, I'm going to be using this reindeer, which was a free printable available on Pixabay. I'll also have that linked in my description box. I'm going to use the pencil transfer method where you color on the back and then you use a pen to trace it out onto your project. Here's my reindeer. It came out really nice and clear. I'm going to use my favorite marker, which is a scrapbooking marker, and I'm going to use the thick tip. It has a fine tip on the other end, and I'm just going to literally color him in. This sign is going to be so simple, you could recreate it in a couple of hours. It just takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of time. My reindeer is all colored in, and now I'm just using a really large bowl lid from one of my plastic bowls to give myself an arc on top of it. So I just want to make sure that it's nicely centered and then I'm just going to use a pencil and make some dots to go around in an arc. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I love using alphabet stencils and this one was one that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and it's a really nice one. It's just a farmhouse font, just regular, nothing too fancy. And I'm going to stencil in the words Kringle and Company. But again, I am not going to paint it. I'm actually going to use my marker. So I'm going to trace out all of my letters with pencil first and then just color them in. So super simple. 
underneath the reindeer, I'm going to use this really skinny font, which kind of looks like a Ray Dunn font. And I'm going to put the words premium reindeer feed. This is the part that's going to take a while. I wanted to try this with just the marker because I know I've been doing some different handwriting and freehanding and I wanted to give you some options to be able to do these types of signs yourself if you don't have good handwriting. I love using alphabet stencils and you don't always even have to paint with them. You can just color them in like I'm doing. This also gives you a great variety to change up your colors if you wanted to do something festive for Christmas. Here's everything colored in with my marker and it looks amazing. What I'm gonna do now is take the thin end of the marker and just go along the left-hand side of each letter and give it a shadow line. This will make it look more professional, more high-end, and it's just something that I really like on my letters. I also decided to give the reindeer some shadow effect. So again, I'm going on the left side and just gonna be drawing in some really thin lines close to the original image. I really like how the sign is turning out and you could actually leave it just like this if you wanted, but I wanted to add a little bit some extra to the side, make it look a little bit more farmhouse. So I measured out about an inch from the letter K and I've drawn a one straight line all the way up and down. Then I'm gonna measure in a quarter of an inch twice and make those lines. What I'm gonna do is make some grain sack striping. I'm still just using my marker for this and I'm going to use the ruler to help me make those lines and color it in. So it's just really simple, move your ruler back and forth and just make a straight line up and down and that will fill in these lines really well. Once you're done, this is what it looks like. I'm going to repeat the process on the other side. One thing to remember when you're using a marker, and it might just be this marker and not other markers, but I tend to smudge because I'm coloring on top of the black and then my hand touches it and then I touch the white. So I decided to go with it and just smudge everything and make the white look really dirty and aged and old. To age it and distress it even more, I took a chip brush and some white chalk paint and just went across it, focusing a little bit more on the grain sack stripes where there wasn't any distressing at all. And then I also did a little bit of a pouncing technique, which really kind of makes it look even more aged because some of the white makes it look like it's coming through from the bottom or it's wearing off the top. Anyway. It looks distressed so but this is just a little technique that I stumbled upon and I really like it. So here I've got my frame pieces and I'm going to just use some hot glue to put them together and hold them in place so I can flip it over and get the board centered the way I need it to be. So now I was able to just put the picture underneath and try and figure out where it was going to need to be secured. I put some hot glue just in a couple of spots because then I needed to flip it over one more time and be able to really secure the board to the frame on the back. I'm going to hammer the board into the frame using these little upholstery tacks that are really super sharp. They're really easy to use because you can push them into wood or into this MDF board and then just nail them in place.
I Today I'm making two Dollar Tree DIYs for you. This is a Canada sign that you can see here and I just wanted to take all of that glitter and paper off on the top. Now this is an arduous procedure. It takes a long time and you have to be patient but just using the Dollar Tree scraper I was able to just pull it off and reveal a beautiful board underneath. Since I'm not going to be using the two hanging holes, I'm taking some of my spackle and I'm going to fill that in, let it dry, and then sand it down. Next, I'm going to give it two coats of DIY chalk paint in white. And this is just a latex white paint that's had some baby powder added to it. If you want the full recipe, it is down in my description box on each of my videos. If you have any questions about it, let me know in the comments. I've turned the sign sideways because that's how I'm going to use it. And I took my ruler and a pencil and I divided the boards so you can see them better. And now I'm just taking some black chalk paint. Again, it's a DIY with just an acrylic paint that's black and adding some baby powder to it. And I'm just going to do some dry brushing. I start always with a really light touch and then at some point throughout I usually get a dark spot and then that, see there's the dark spot, and then that kind of tells me that I need to go over some of the other boards and make it look a little bit more uniform. I tried something a little different this time when I was doing my dry brushing to add some of the darker spots in and you can see that I've got my brush just kind of turned on its side and I'm just stroking with the wood grain to give it a little bit more depth and character. I'm using this bowl that I have in my craft room and I'm just using it as a template to create a circle so I can make sure that when I'm gluing this wreath together, it's not gonna go haywire. So I'm going to be making a mini pine cone wreath and I've got two types of these mini pine cones from the Dollar Tree. They have a bag that is some frosted ones and they have some that are plain. I'm going to be doing a mix of pine cones throughout this wreath and all I'm doing is hot gluing them in one direction all the way around. So I'll start at the top and then kind of stagger them to the side and just mix up the shades and the sizes until I get a look that I like. Here's how the wreath is looking. I think it's coming together really nicely and I'm so glad I did that pencil circle line because it definitely is keeping me on track and I'm not ending up with an oval or a square or some other wonky shape. Okay, so here's what I'm famous for. Doing a project, turning my camera off to give the camera a break or maybe charge up my battery, and then forgetting to turn the camera back on when I continue my craft. This is what happened with these little red pip berries that you see in the top left-hand corner. I cut them apart and put a couple here and there all the way through. I grouped them in some singles and some double little pips and I think it turned out really pretty. What I'm doing here now is just adding some boxwood greenery. I thought it needed something to brighten it up and as soon as I kind of laid some of these leaves against it, I thought, wow, it's really making a big difference. Even though I want it to be rustic and farmhouse, that little pop of greenery just makes all the difference in the world. So I'm just gonna take two of the little leaves and then use some hot glue and put them around and get them in a place where I like them. I'm just going to be doing the bottom portion of the wreath. I don't want to go all the way around with the greenery because then it starts to look a little cheap. I also added some of the leaves down at the bottom of the wreath and now I'm working with these pip berries. There's a little fabric leaf that I'm just taking off here and then I'm going to trim it down and figure out where I want to put it. I'm adding another bunch of these little pip berries down at the bottom and then I'm going to also add a few other leaves. Here you can see that I pulled out the leaves that I had on the inside of the wreath. I decided I didn't like them but I added a few more of the leaves down at the bottom. To hang the wreath I'm just going to use some twine and I'm going to double it up and then just hot glue it on the back. And here's how this cutie turned out. Mm -hmm. 
As I said earlier, these trees are really skimpy, so that's why I chose three. So the first thing I need to do is attach the feet to one of the trees. Next, I'll fluff out the tree. And when these are packed, they're all the branches are kind of pushed towards one side. So you have to kind of work it and twist them around to make sure that you've got branches all the way around. I don't need the plastic piece at the bottom, so that just easily pulls right off. So I'm going to go ahead and fluff this second tree, but I'm only going to fluff it out to one side. So basically I'm going to make it half of a tree and I'll do this for the third tree as well. Now that I've got one full tree and two halves of a tree, I'm going to just put them together and use cable ties to tie the three trees together making sure that I put a cable tie down at the bottom, in the middle, and at the top because I want these to be very secure. Once all three trees are tied together, I'm going to go ahead and fluff the trees again, making sure that I've got the same type of fullness all the way around. Check out the fullness of this tree. You would have never thought that this came from the Dollar Tree. One thing that I really like to do is to pull off all the individual little branches and not use a bush the way it actually comes from the store because I want to be able to add little bits and pieces all over the place. So I'm just going to strip these little branches off and I'm going to cut about six of them in half because I want to add these fillers to the top of the tree and those branches are quite a bit shorter than the regular size branches. I decided to add some red berries because I thought the combination of white, silver and red would be really pretty. I'm going to take my snips and I'm going to cut off little bits of these berries, probably in bunches of maybe five or six and then maybe some smaller bunches of one or two and place them around the tree. Not sure if I mentioned this, but I'm sure you saw me wielding my glue gun. So that's what I'm using to attach all of these embellishments. I'm starting with the larger bunches of berries and those I'm going to put more towards the stem of the tree, so more in the middle, and then the smaller berries will make their way out to the ends of the branches. I don't know if you can tell from the video, but it's starting to take on a little bit of a pink effect. I think the reflection of the berries is starting to make the branches look a little bit uh, rosy. Anyhow, the next step I'm going to do is take some of these little mirror ball ornaments that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. And I'm not going to bother taking the little strings off because you don't really see them. But I'm going to go ahead and glue some of these in and around the tree, some on the edges of the branches and some in the center, just to give this tree a little bit more glitter. One more thing that I added to the tree was the little silver filler balls that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I do apologize, I totally turned my camera off at that point, but I ended up gluing one of those little balls on every single end of the stem on the tree. I decided to use Country Grey, which is a Rust-Oleum chalk paint, and I'm gonna give this just one coat. I'm also going to make sure that I go down about two inches on the inside of the crate just in case anything is showing when I put the tree in. 
The paint is dry, so I want to do a little bit of distressing on it. So I'm using some burnt umber acrylic paint and I'm going to use a dry brush technique. I'm going to use very little of the brown and I just want to kind of go through and brush it in the direction of the wood grain. The tree stand pieces are too big for my little crate. So I'm just holding the tree in the middle of the crate and I'm just going to mark with my pencil where I need to snip those ends off. The tree fits perfectly into the little crate and I'm just going to put some hot glue on the bottom of the plastic feet and glue it in. This project was so much fun. I've always wanted to do one of these wood slice snow globes. This has six different pieces that were cut out using the X-Tool machine. The very first one that you can see there when blue has some nice little stars that are cut out of it. So I decided to give it a nice navy blue stain. I'm going to be staining everything else as well. This next layer is just some trees for the background. To get the stained look on each layer and for all the different colors, I'm just giving the wood slice a little spritz of water or I'm just brushing some water on with my paintbrush and then adding the paint onto it. And that just creates a watered down acrylic or chalk paint, whatever you happen to be using. But it gives it a really nice look because you can see the wood grain coming through. For the last four, I put some white on it because you're going to be seeing each little layer as they get glued on. So I wanted to have some snow at the bottom. This one with the moon is the very last piece. So I'm just going to paint that completely white, even the little edge. But I'm always leaving the brown burnt edge on the outside. I just really love that rustic look. To glue all these pieces together, it's best to use a glue that can be fairly flat. So I'm using a Lean's Tacky glue rather than hot glue. I didn't want there to be any gaps in between and sometimes with hot glue that can happen. I'm just going to apply a generous amount and then glue all of my pieces one on top of the other until I get to the top. I wanted to add a little bit of sparkle to the snow at the bottom of this snow globe project. So I'm just adding some more tacky glue and I'm going to just sprinkle on some Epsom salt. I'm going to just hold it down with my finger, press it into the glue and then tap off the excess. And this project is complete. For this project, my idea is to make a giant gingerbread cookie. I painted this with a color called espresso, just acrylic paint to give it one coat. And now I'm doing the same paint, but this time I've added some baking soda because I want to give it a little bit of texture. And I'm going in the direction of how the circle is, just to kind of give it more of a cookie-like effect. When you're working with wood cutout crafts, there's always a lot of painting involved. I'm not gonna make you watch me paint everything. I'm starting off with this little house that again was cut out using the X-Tool M1. And I'm going to be painting this guy white. 
And you're going to see why in a minute. Normally you would think that a gingerbread house would be brown first, but since my large cookie is brown, I need everything to kind of pop right off of the base. So using the X tool M1, I cut out the words Christmas here using this fun font. I also have the word farmhouse cut out in a different type of font. I'm just using hot glue to put everything together. And with these farmhouse letters, they're a little bit smaller. So I'm being really careful to only apply a tiny little bit of hot glue because I don't want anything oozing out the side. You could also use some crazy glue or super glue or even the Aileen's tacky glue that would work as well. The house didn't have a proper roof, so I just used a couple of popsicle sticks, cut them down to size, glued them on, and then gave them a little rough coat of the same espresso paint. Now I'm taking the back of my paintbrush and I'm dipping it into some red paint and I'm just going to give all of these letters, the Christmas letters anyway, some little red dots. And I just thought that would be fun. It kind of looks like gingerbread icing maybe in the colors of red and green. So I'm going to do red dots and green dots. And right now it just kind of looks like the chicken box. But once I get everything done, I think you'll see that it looks much better. I already had these little green trees in my stash of woodcraft supplies, although they would have been very easy to cut out using the X Tool M1 as well. I just figured I would save myself a little bit of time and money since I already had these and just use what I have for now. So I'm just going to be gluing them down next to the house. You can see that I painted the chimney red and I've added some red dots on the house as well, as well as some green dots. I'm also going to be adding some of these little snowflake cutouts, the large one on one side and then the two smaller ones on the other side. I used some tulip puffy paint in white to add some design around the word farmhouse at the top of the sign. And now I'm just adding some little dots in between the letters at the bottom. And I think I should have stopped here because I really liked the effect of the white against the brown and looking at it now while I'm editing, I think it looks absolutely beautiful the way it is. However, I went a little puffy paint happy and it turned out a little busy or busy. Here are my six trees. I'm going to be painting two of them in one color and then I'll have three colors for all six trees. So two each color. I also cut out some houses. You can see those above. I've already painted them in a color called espresso, which is similar to gingerbread. So I've decided to make little gingerbread houses and trees for this project. I'm using my white tulip puffy paint again, and I promise this time I won't go crazy with it. I'm just going to outline some of the windows, give the rooftops some designs, fill in the chimney stacks, and then these will be done. I'm also going to give the trees some snow using the puffy paint and I'm going to try real hard not to go overboard with these as well. But this puffy paint is kind of addicting. So if you haven't tried it yet, give it a shot. It's a lot of fun to do. If you're enjoying these wood cutout projects and you'd love to do some of them for yourself, stay tuned to the end of the video where I give you a brief overview of my new Etsy shop. I will be having some of these available. I know it's pretty close to the end of the Christmas season for decorating, but I'll be doing some of these craft projects for the new year into the different seasons as well. To keep this little village looking rustic, I just grabbed a piece of scrap wood and now I'm just going to hot glue all of the pieces right on top of it. I'm going to put the houses towards the front and the trees in the back and I'm going to stagger them to look like a forest. I really love how this one turned out. It was so much fun to create and I hope you like it too.
Thanks so much for spending some of your time with me today. I truly appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell. See you in the next one.